Welcome to the Implement AI podcast, the podcast where we explore the impact of AI on your business. I'm Piers Linney, alongside my co-host and co-founder of Implement AI, Dr. Alok Shukla, we cover the real world applications and impact of how AI can be practically applied to drive growth and efficiency in your organization. We cut through the jargon to focus on actionable strategies and use cases to highlight the transformational power of AI. Let's dive into today's conversation. Well, yeah, I mean, it's very interesting. I, I was, I, I remember the day it was kind of a very early January uh, and it was just, it was just two years ago, really, when I kind of woke up and I started hearing about AI, as we know, has been around for, for a long, long, long time. But in terms of kind of mainstream from people like me who are you know, fundamentally non-techy, to see this thing called chat GPT and then start playing around with the thing, wow. And I immediately just thought, wow, the implications of this, you know, I work in financial services. It's all about numbers. It's also about the written word and communication. It's about communication and, and even using visuals and a bunch of other, other things there. And I immediately thought, wow, this is going to have a huge impact in my own sector, in my business and, and, and in, in my own business, hence engaging with you guys. My experience is everything sort of went off at a crazy pace earlier on. Everyone got excited about using these these various uh, LLMs and, and various tools. And of course, um, OpenAI and ChatGPT was issuing and, and updating and upgrading on a regular basis. And then you had you know Google and, and you know, dozens of different. There was a, there's a sense of overwhelm at the speed at which things were moving. So there was that initial kind of spike of interest and activity. And frankly, I think there was a, a, le a leveling off of that because people were saying, well, all right, this is great, but it's helping me, you know, write a blog or, or post on LinkedIn, but what are the practical applications? And I think there was a period where things slowed down uh, a bit. And then we had, as, as you alluded to, Piers, you had the evolution quite quickly of, uh, of, of verticals effectively. So organizations that were very specifically targeting my profession, my, my industry, and we had a bunch of startups just come out of nowhere. I think that's the big difference, isn't it? Is that um, there's a lot of noise. We always say you've got the kind of noise, the PR frontier, you've got the technological frontier, then the operational frontier. We kind of play in the operational frontier. But the technological frontier, that jagged one, is becoming operational, you know, reliable and deployable and dependable very, very quickly. And that's what we do. And I think what people are realizing now is that, you know, eight and two things. One, sitting on your hands is probably a dangerous game, just in case you do completely miss the boat, because in our view, you will. Or concierge team, that you can take the, the time to like understand people, you know, personalize, know exactly what their goals and objectives are. Because you deal with people that like successfully selling their business or planning to sell their business yeah. and impact on family. So, you know, they, they connect with you because they you, they understand that you get them basically, right? Like, and like you talk a lot about, you know, life after selling a business or how to, you got incredible advice on your, on your podcast about like many successful people have maximized the value of their business. So the whole point, the more you can kind of connect with them emotionally, I always say the psychology is greater than the technology basically, right? So if you can say, you know, and understand the questions about what, what their goals are, what their objectives, then, you know, maybe they get a personalized video or note or anything like that, which is like, we're looking forward to getting you or at the time when it's ready for you, we can do this, like all of that stuff, basically scale your care essentially is to right yeah sure so one, one thing i've been saying actually for at least 12 months now is we don't need any more technology to transform companies and that kind of squashes the the people who kind of keep saying oh no we'll wait another six months to see if this gets any better it's like hello you don't need this to be any better you know it literally can do anything a human can do today and I'm, I'm not just talking about ai itself i'm talking about the full landscape of technology Everything around data, workflow engines, AI systems, automation systems, you know, and the orchestration of all of that. So it's, you know, the first thing is we don't need anything else. We can transform entire companies. The, other, the second thing is, you know, it's getting better and better every six months. So the GPT-5 is coming out very, very, very soon. You know, Grok, Grok, Grok 4 just came out as well. And what's happening is the IQ. You, what's happening is the IQ is starting to go up and also the EQ side of AI is starting to go up as well. And this brought up a conversation that I had in Paris with Jensen Huang and the NVIDIA team and a lot of other people like the CEO of Mistral AI, where we're starting to split up and finally start to define AGI and ASI. So AGI, think of it as this you know, textbook smart, can pass any exam, is textbook smarter than any human. 
And this is definitely going to be available within the next two years. So by 2027, maximum 2028. And then ASI is more of a, you know, existential type of discussion. What is true intelligence? Can it invent things that have never been invented before? It's more theological than anything else. You know, does it have consciousness? All this kind of stuff. And that might not ever happen or it might happen in 20 years. Who knows? And to be honest, who cares? People should not be hung up on this discussion of ASI. AGI is just, you know, absolutely amazing, better than any group of humans. So the, the reason I'm bringing this up is very quickly, the reason I'm bringing this up is at the moment, regulators are protecting the, the job market because they're putting in place this maker checker process. So human in the loop, right? We all heard this term, human in the loop, where you must have a human at the end of this process. It could have been done all by AI and automation, but you must have a human to approve it at the end. Now, when a system gets to 300 IQ, which will happen by the end of this year, at least 250 IQ, it doesn't make sense anymore for a human to be checking that work. It's a bit like I'm, you know, me giving my son, a nine-year-old, you know, checking my work. He has no clue what I'm doing or how I'm doing it. And, you know, so a human in the loop is going to start not making sense as quickly as next year already. So there's a lot of things happening, right? If a company doesn't use it to transform very quickly, they're going to be in a point where they'd be competing with companies who are have this installed left, right, and center. Human in the loop is no longer really needed. Then how do you compete? And it's too late. We have already the Intel CEO saying that it's already too late to install AI and use it in their company. So, you know, bigger companies are already starting to show signs of this. All right. Let me, let me go through what I've been going through with quite a few people. I'm going to call it the seven habits of highly effective AI. Okay, there's a book in this. The, the seven one, yeah. habits of highly effective people is one of the best books ever. I've been recommending it more and more to people. Actually read the book. Don't get a summary. Don't get an audio book. Read it. And the reason I've been, I've been recommending this book to several people is for different reasons, because to upskill themselves in the age of AI, you need to work on yourself and your capability. But the second thing also, it just gives you the kind of like tools for life. But why am I talking about the highly effective AI? Because if you look at that book, there's two parts. There's a, there's a diagram where it talks about internal victory and then external victory, basically. Right? Like, uh, and if you think about AI, putting AI in your organization, I would look at those two dimensions, internal victory first, external victory second. So you ask the question, where do we actually start with AI? I would start with internal victory for the business. So in, in, in for a human, that is your, you know, your mindset, begin with the end of mind, you know, like put first things first, you know, like work on yourself, you know, seek first to understand, you know, and, and before you, you know, seek to be understood. You know, like, so the point in, in some of those different ones is like about working on yourself, your understanding, your mindset and, and, and abilities. So with AI, what that is, understanding your customers, understanding your data. So one of the first places we start with anyone is an analyst agent. You can look at your workflows, your processes that you've got now and automate parts of it. And you know, you've got humans in the loop now, maybe soon you won't have that. But then we always say, but the real winners, your competition is not the incumbents. It's not the people you meet at your annual events, right? It's the new entrants that are going to be AI first. So you've got to look at your business and almost in a separate pocket almost, or maybe it's part of the same process. What would it look like if we started a game? Because that's your competition. What we're going to do though is do some demos. Um, so we're going to go through, we're going to show you um, the AIOS because that, that's our platform. Uh, and we're going to show you how, how we sort of deploy the agents, what they can do, what they're capable of. So we're going to go through three, well, we've got, we're going to start with paths to transformation. So how do you get there? How do you approach it? If you're, do you hire people? Do you hire digital workers? When do you, when do you hire people? When do you have autonomous agents? And when do you have people that are humans that are augmented with agents as well? So how do you make that decision? Our strap line is, you know, grow your workforce, not your payroll. So what does that actually mean? And then we're going to look at the transformation. And to be honest, I had, a, I, had a, I had a brilliant meeting with a business owner yesterday. And, and actually, it was two days ago. Then they referred me to, their, to, to another senior leader in their team, basically. And they basically said, like, look, we need people in support. We have to support all of our customers and, and having a very good experience is very important for us. But we literally hired somebody and they went on sick leave the next day and <laughs> off for four or five days, basically. <laughs> she was, they were saying to me, like, even if the AI is 30 or 40% as good, I'm happy because I'd rather be training. Better than zero. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Gosh, but, I mean, like, how can you join a job and go on sick leave the next day? Like, I mean, it's one day is fine, but four days in a row anyway, whatever. But like, but the point I'm trying to make here is that like more and more we're getting people that are from like the operations capacity, they kind of saying like, I don't want to hire more people. I just can't throw bodies at the problem because what happens then also is you lose that knowledge that people have. And so you haven't got that, you haven't got some systems. So they're, they're asking a very wise question. Like, what would it look like to have a digital co-worker in that department or to have people or, or even with some businesses we're talking about, they're even thinking about like how could an entire department be transferred to AI and shift it? So, for example, one business we're working with, they have people making outbound calls, but they actually want to shift everything so that the agents make all the outbound calls and then the team deal with only inbound calls. So it's higher value and higher you know, growth they can do. So you could have a fundamental re-engineer. So in that approach, it's basically like, OK, I want to spin up some digital workers. And, and get that working. So how can we do that, basically? So that's like much more strategic in that way. And then the really interesting one, that I think my favorite, is the computer use agent. And this is a game changer. And these are evolving very, very quickly. And this is where it can use a mouse, you can use a keyboard, it can see a screen, and it can do things that um, humans can do. Really. And, the, and the use case we're going to show you today is really about research. So, Alain, over to you. Let's talk about paths to transformation. Our strapline is great workforce, not your payroll. To you, what does that mean? When do you hire someone? We've had some great instances in the last week, actually, of, of, of showing you where this really matters. When do you hire? When you don't hire? And maybe I'll touch on the, the, the three R's again in terms of the vectors. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly that. So ChatGPT5, you know, we use it at the API, and we can talk about that maybe in another podcast, how that's how we've upgraded our agents. But again, I still do, and we both do events where we ask the room, right? Who uses an AI yourself? Sidekick, mentor, you know, researched, creating your own podcast from, um, from research you've done using, say, you know, Google Notebook LM, but just using it an AI. And it doesn't matter which one, but just pick one. And it always amazes me how many people are not using it. And I just don't understand why, because it's transformative. No matter who you are and what you do, there is some use case for you personally. So what they've done on ChatGPT, if you use if you use ChatGPT as opposed to other AIs, you, and some of them have a, you have lots of different models, lots of pickers, so they they've got rid of that, which is that's what upset a few people. So now there's one ChatGPT five, and when you ask it to do something, be it you know create an image, um, uh, research, deep research, a quick response, uh, trying to find something, it will then work out what model behind the scenes or what technology it should use to give you the optimal answer. And it goes away and does that. So sometimes I've used that where recently where I'm doing a quick, you know, quick chat. I'm trying to find something on holiday and it tells me very quickly. Yes, it is. Because like, basically it's like the tooling layer essentially, isn't it? Right. Like, so imagine for example, like you want to develop a new land, like you've just uh, reached this new land and it's like, okay, we need to like construct on this place. So let's get a load of building machines. Let's get a load of like JCBs. Let's get a load of like, you know, like forklift trucks and stuff like that. And like Caterpillar trucks. Again, you can tell I don't know anything about building sites, but like anyway, you get those things and then that will help start preparing the land. So basically you think of like the AI coding tools is like helping you accelerate the kind of foundation laying basically like to help different things and also even construct different areas but that is like the kind of level one thing because the second thing level order of it is like how those function in the real world basically right so obviously like you know your, your lovables and things like that are doing fantastically well for like helping people prototype and then as it evolves more and then there's gonna be like more and more applications which are actually functioning and working more value can be unlocked basically isn't it right? yes um so they're saying that people lost um you know 4.0 are quite upset about it but, you know, you get used to using a certain kind of technology. I know my partner actually liked a certain voice, the, the voice they use in ChatGPT, and they changed the voice. So she got quite upset saying, it doesn't sound like the same person. And that was not a person. Uh, so, um, so people are getting quite upset about the, the sort of changes. But, you know, these are all points on the exponential curve, right? And you're going to look back in a year or two years at ChatGPT5. And again, I always use the same analogy. It's going to look like dial-up internet when you're, you know, you're using your Starlink, essentially. So remember that, that these changes are for the good, because oh, they do think about it quite hard. Yeah, we, we've uh, had our AI Activate program, which you can see on our website. But since we launched AI OS, it's quite different now, because now we can deploy... Um, kind of ongoing digital work as AI agents. And actually, there's a, one of our customers, this is all arm's length, we don't ask them to do this or they don't make it up. Um, one of our customers, um, Sam Turner from Advantos, which we'll give a shout out because he's a, an avid listener to our podcast. He uh, did a video testimonial on um, LinkedIn, which was, 
you know, and, and these things actually really matter to us. It's, it's amazing to hear a customer, you know, just talk about the value we've added. So let's move on to the, the LinkedIn post. So this was basically um, some research by MIT, uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the US. Uh, it was quite famous for churning out technology entrepreneurs and their sort of experts. And it basically said that um, this study showed that 90% of generative AI projects, which I guess that's kind of piloting it, rolling it out, trying to use it in business, are failing. And I kind of read that and it, it struck me that, well, we kind of know why, because we see this a lot and we see a lot of companies that have, have come to us, talked to us, even done our programs and then gone away and thought, oh, well, we'll, we'll do it ourselves or we'll go for the list uh, or we'll, we'll try another route. And then six months later, they've come back to us and said, well, yeah, we tried that. It didn't work. It didn't work with us. And I've got to say, Alok, I mean, you know the stats probably better than I do, that I don't think a single one of our AI projects, if you want to call it that, has failed. To be perfectly honest, if you want your business to be having any chance of like thriving and growing in 2026 and beyond, when all your competitors are going to be actually like, you know, deploying their digital workforces, you've got to get started now because you're basically, this is the time and there's so much opportunity for the forward thinking business owners. In fact, a few of our customers are coming to the event, which will be fantastic to catch up with them. Yeah. The next one. So this is the one, one I talk about quite a lot is you haven't involved the people that actually do the work, right? So you can sit in your board or your senior leadership or your, your you might even have a, a working group talking about artificial intelligence and, and new technology. And you decide, you know what, we should go and look at this, which might be, might be correct. But we need, we all say, if you have a working group, you want it to be horizontal. So senior leadership across departments, but also you want it to be vertical. So actually, yes, it might include the, the manager, the director, whatever, you, whatever the job titles are, but you want it to include the most junior people in your business as well, because they're the ones that are going to say to you, did you know I spend two hours a day doing this mundane, repetitive nonsense? And the response might be, no, I didn't. So unless you've got that kind of matrix approach to the organization to extract the kind of the insights you need from it, it's going to be very hard to find the real automation opportunities that are going to add some value. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Implement AI podcast. If you're interested in learning more about how we can assist you and your business in leveraging AI for growth and efficiency, visit our website at implementai.io. Don't forget to subscribe to the Implement AI podcast on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, or wherever you listen to stay updated on future episodes. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.